rational expressions first, okay? Rational expressions. Uh, this unit is on rationals. Now, let's first of all establish what a rational expression is. Think about the root words, okay? Rational, the root being ratio. Ratio, you should think fraction, okay? So a rational expression is a fraction with um, a polynomial. So that makes a lot of sense. With polynomials, not the word a in there. Uh, polynomials in the numerator and denominator. Now, sometimes there will not be a polynomial in the numerator. It may just be a constant. As long as there's a polynomial in the denominator, it is considered a rational expression. Okay? Uh, now, we are dealing with fractions. So we have to be very, very, very careful if something causes our denominator to be zero. Because we're not allowed to divide by zero. Bad things happen when we divide by zero. That's undefined. Um, so that's, we're going to have to deal with that here in a minute. So here are the instructions when you're trying to simplify rational expressions. We want to factor as much as we possibly can. Anytime we're dealing with fractions, or not fractions, factoring, too many F words, you want to look for the GCF first. Um, we want to take that out of possible and then go from there with any other type of factoring that we've learned about. Excluded values is something that we're going to have to talk about, and those are what make the denominator equal zero. So after we factor, we're going to figure out what we have to exclude, and then after we figure that out, we're going to cancel any factors that show up in both the numerator and in the denominator exactly. So let's look at number one from the white paper. <clears throat> a plus 7 over 2a plus 14. Uh, so, we got a factor. The numerator is a linear expression. You can't factor linear expressions unless there's a GCF. There's not a GCF in the numerator. However, there is a GCF in the denominator. So, I'm going to leave the numerator the way it is. I am going to put parentheses around it just to help us visualize. Here in a second, the denominator has a GCF of 2. So, we're going to factor out a 2. When we do that, we are left with a plus 7. Now, before we go any further, over here to the side, I'm going to figure out what my excluded values are. So I'm going to take what's in the denominator and I'm going to set it equal to zero. Um, so 2 equals zero. Well, that doesn't make any sense. 2 doesn't equal zero. So that doesn't do anything. I just do that in case there's a variable as part of our GCF. We don't want to lose that. Um, but if it's just a constant, it doesn't mean anything to us, really. Uh, 8 plus 7 equals zero. That means that... Um, a cannot equal negative 7. Right? A cannot equal negative 7. <clears throat> because if A is negative 7, look what happens. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. Alright? So, um, we figured out what our excluded values are. Now we're going to look at our rational expression and see if we can cancel anything. A plus 7 shows up in the numerator and in the denominator, so we cancel it. Well, we canceled what was in the numerator. The numerator doesn't just disappear. we got to put a 1 in its place. And we're left with a 2 in the denominator. And then after that, we're going to list our excluded values. So this expression is equal to 1 half, except for a cannot equal negative 7. <clears throat> so you may be thinking, well, how on earth did I start with something that has variables in it, and then I end up with something that doesn't have any variables in it? Let's just use a couple of examples. Okay, let's say, for example, a is equal to 3. Okay, I'm just picking random numbers here. Okay, a is equal to 3, so if I plug that in, I get 3 plus 10, excuse me, 3 plus 7 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 14 is 20. 10 over 20 reduces to 1 half. Let's pick a negative number. Let's pick no negative 5. <clears throat> negative 5 plus 7 over 2 times negative 5 plus 14. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 plus 14 is 4. 2 over 4, 1 half. I could do this all day long. I could pick any number I want to for A, and every single time it's going to reduce to 1 half. Except for <clears throat> if I pick negative 7, look at what happens. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. 
two times negative 10 is negative 14 plus uh, 14 is 0. 0 divided by 0 is even worse than just dividing by 0. Um, dividing 0 by itself is what we call an indeterminate form. It's not just undefined. Okay? Um, so, there's a little bit of an explanation of why our answer looks the way that it does and why negative 7 is excluded. Okay? Now, you don't have to go through what I just did there in purple. You don't need to do that for every single problem. Now, you can do it to check your work. <clears throat> um, but I'm just trying to show you the fact that they are equivalent. Okay. All right, let's take number two. N squared minus 4N minus 45 over N squared plus 11N plus 30. So we want to factor the numerator factors into N minus 9 times N plus 5. The denominator is N plus 6 times N plus 5. Now the order that you write it in doesn't matter. You may factor it in a different order. You may write your factors in a different order. Doesn't matter as long as you're factored correctly. So let's figure out what we have to exclude. Anything that makes the denominator 0, n plus 6 cannot equal 0, n plus 5 cannot equal 0. So subtract 6 from both sides. That says n cannot equal negative 6. Subtract 5 from both sides. n cannot equal negative 5. Going back to our problem where we have it factored, n plus 5 shows up in the numerator and the denominator, so we can cancel that. n minus 9 over n plus 6 is the simplified ratio, and then n cannot equal negative 5 or negative 6. Now, <clears throat> do not cancel those n's. Okay? At the end, after you cancel the n plus 5, you cannot cancel those ends um, because there's a minus after one of them and there's a plus after the other. You can only cancel things when you're multiplying a factor by another factor. If you are adding something together or subtracting something together, you cannot cancel those factors. They would have to be exactly the same. <laughs> now, you could also check this. Uh, anytime you're trying to simplify something, remember you can type it into your y equals. Um, the only thing you have to remember here is you've got to put the entire numerator in parentheses. Make sure you close the parentheses, the entire denominator in parentheses. If you do not, your calculator follows the order of operations and it is only going to divide the 45 and the x squared, and it's not going to be the same function. So you type the original one into y1, you type your answer into y2, again, putting parentheses around the entire numerator, entire denominator, <clears throat> go to the table, and make sure that the y values match up. You can even check your excluded values. We go to negative 5 and negative 6, we see error messages. <clears throat> now, uh, when we get to the graphing part, it'll make sense why negative 5 only has an error for one of them and not for another one. Uh, right now, you just need to know that that's because it cancels. Okay, that factor canceled, but the n plus 6 was still in the denominator. Um, so that's why the negative 6 has an error in both of them, the original and the simplified version. But the negative 5 canceled. It doesn't show up in our simplified version, so that's why it doesn't have an error for y2. Alright, a couple more, and then I'm going to let you practice. Number 3, 6r squared minus 30r over negative r squared plus 14r minus 45. This numerator has a GCF of what? 6r, okay? So when we take that out, we're left with an r and a minus 5. Now, that bottom, we don't factor when the leading coefficient is negative. So we're going to start by taking out a negative, which changes all of our signs. I'm going to keep the top the way it is. The bottom, r minus 9 and r minus 5. 
Excluded values. R minus 9 cannot equal 0. R minus 5 cannot equal 0. So that says R cannot equal 9. And R cannot equal 5. Go back to our problem. We can simplify. We can cancel those R minus 5s. <coughs> So we have 6R over negative R minus 9. Now, you will never see on an answer key or in a multiple choice answer choice that negative hanging out in the bottom. So we always move that to the numerator or this answer key just puts it in front of the entire fraction, but you don't leave it in the denominator. Okay, you do not leave it in the denominator. Um, And you cannot cancel those R's because the one on the bottom has a minus after it. And there was something else that I was going to say. Oh, um, if that had been like a negative 3 that we had factored out, okay, say this had been a negative 3 that we had found, only the negative sign itself would be in the top. The 3 would stay down in the denominator. Okay, only the negative sign because it's like negative 1. Okay, anytime you see a negative sign, it's like multiplying by negative 1. So whether we divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1, it's the same difference. So the number part would stay in the bottom if we had had that. Okay, let's look at number 6. m squared plus 3m minus 10 over 2 minus m. Okay, the numerator factors into m plus 5 and m minus 2. <coughs> The denominator is not in standard form, and it looks very similar to one of my factors from the numerator. So I'm going to start by reversing the order. And is it okay if I factor out the negative at the same time? Are we okay with that? Okay. M was negative. I don't like a negative leading coefficient. So I take out a negative. It changes both my signs. So the M becomes positive. The 2 becomes negative. Um... Excluded value, m minus 2 cannot equal 0, so m cannot equal positive 2. Cancel the m minus 2s. That negative moves to the top. Make sure you keep those parentheses around that m plus 5. And your excluded value is 2. Questions about that? Yes. <laughs> because it's in the numerator. It's okay to equal zero in the numerator. Zero divided by anything is just zero. It's just we can't divide by zero. So it's only factors in the denominator that cause us to exclude values. Okay? Only the ones in the denominator. All right. Okay, so let's